so many different skillful means. And one of the things you can do here, which is very, very, um, uh, very, very effective, and you can especially do this when you go home, is learning how to be a visitor, not an owner. It's you know, one of the stories in my book, the Good, Bad, Who Knows book. Because many of you know me really well, usually on the weekends I have to go teaching in Nolamara Temple. This weekend Ajahn Pramadi is doing that so I can be here. So Friday, Saturday and Sunday I work my butt off down at Nolamara. And Sunday evening you come back here and you work your butt off at Bodhinyana Monastery. I'm surprised I've got any butt left. <laughs> After all, that working it up. <laughs> so you work really hard, and it was just work, work, work. And you know, people, are you guys and girls, you come to Bodhinyana Monastery, and you tell me how peaceful is Bodhinyana Monastery, how serene and beautiful it is. And I said, you guys must be joking. It's such hard work when you live there. And I realised, I was wrong. So, I decided one morning a week, and I did this for quite a few years, I still do it every now and again, one morning a week, I would pretend to be a visitor, not the abbot. So people would, on a Monday morning, they'd come up to me and say, Ajahn Brahm, can I ask you a question on meditation? I said, no you can't, I'm only visiting, I'm not the abbot today. And the monk, and the monk would say, look, I need some help. I say, sorry, I'm only a visitor. <laughs> and something needed to be done. Sorry, I'm only visiting. I'm not an owner. It's somebody else's job today. And I became a visitor instead of an owner. As soon as I became a visitor, the monastery over the road became peaceful again. And it became beautiful. And I realised the difference between being a visitor and an owner. When you have an, be an owner, you've got lots of responsibilities and duties to do. But when you're a visitor, you've got nothing to do at all. So that's why when I was a visitor, I felt I could do absolutely nothing, I could be totally free. And the same with you, if you go to visit somebody else's house, you go around for dinner. How many of you, you go around for dinner and you wash up for them afterwards? How many times you go and visit someone's house for a cup of tea and you go and vacuum their carpet for them? <laughs> it's not your job, it's somebody else's job, you're a visitor. So when you're a visitor you can enjoy all the facilities without having to do any work at all. So that's why I like spending a few hours every now and again at Bodhinyana the Island Monastery. I'm a visitor, not my responsibility, not my job, I'm just going to enjoy this place without having to do any work whatsoever. It's a way of doing nothing. Now, do you own Jana Grove? Of course you don't, you're visitors, so you've got nothing to do. Oh, what joy! So you're visitors. Now, do you own your body? Does it belong to you? If it does, you've got lots of stuff to do. If you're only visiting this body, it's not really yours. Great, you can just do absolutely nothing and just enjoy it rather than be, have all these responsibilities and fears. And do you own your own mind? If you own your own mind, you better get into deep meditation and get enlightened quickly. But if you don't own your mind, I'm only visiting, it's not my problem. So who cares? Get enlightened, don't get enlightened, none of my business. He he he. <laughs> then you've got absolutely nothing to do whatsoever. So that's the difference between being an owner and being a visitor. And for those of you who've read your suttas by the Buddha, the Buddha kept on saying, this body, this mind, it's not mine. Nothing to do with me, I don't own anything. It's a wonderful realisation to know you don't own anything. Woohoo, so I can't lose anything, I've got nothing to do. I'm only visiting this moment and I never own anything. Oh, what freedom that is. So that's one way oh, we can do nothing. You know, I don't know anything, it's not my mind, not my sort of body, not my jhana growth, so who cares? Isn't that wonderful to be free? That takes effort. But what I usually call it, make a difference between willpower and wisdom power. The effort which uh, gets you into deep meditation is not willpower, but wisdom power. 
is using their effort to be wise and to see things in a different way, such as, I'm a visitor, not an owner, which means, you know, you, you don't have anything to worry about. So look, if any of you get sick on this retreat, don't worry about it, it's just, you know, sickness is visiting, you're a visitor to your body, you don't own it, so it's not your problem at all. You know, you, you know you're sick. You know, Zajan Shah kept on saying, if you're sick, there's only two things can happen. You either get better or you die. Whatever way, you don't stay sick for that long. So you've got nothing to worry about. Woohoo! <laughs> so that is the effort. Wisdom power, not willpower. To learn how to do nothing. <laughs>